A lot of famous recipes are claimed to be made with love. But what's a dish that's probably made with hatred? Jibba Chisenbi. Wasp crackers. Some Japanese people hated wasps so badly, they turned them into crackers. NGLI expected the wasps to be milled into crackers, not crackers that look like cookies with wasps instead of raisins. He also mentions the unsettling sensation of wings and legs getting stuck in his mouth. Nope. Ah, that reminds me of eating grasshoppers. That feeling is enough for me to not like them. And they don't even have an interesting flavor. Arg it makes me shudder just to think about it. I'd be okay with insects and a protein powder or something. Just don't remind me it's an insect. Anything 2 minutes before closing byline cook. As a guy who worked as a cook and literally, just as the lady was about to lock the doors, we still had literally a few minutes and orders a 20 piece of chicken. We call them tailgates. They didn't want the chicken that was still up, they wanted it all fresh. We had to turn the fryers back on, make a fresh batch of chicken batter, and then wait for the fryer to heat back up, then cook the chicken, and by the time the chicken was ready to come up the customers start yelling and storm out. I hated that night. I'm surprised you guys didn't tell them you were already closing, so they could have the already finished chicken or nothing. Those types of customers can never be satisfied, so I won't even bother trying. You guys are way nicer than I would be. The manager is the culprit responsible for that. Me, and everyone else who had unpleasant privilege to be there had to do it, because the manager said so. Believe me, the crew were all on board on telling them to off. My mom snail stew. My mom rents a plot of land for growing organic veggies as a hobby. Now, every damn year an army of snails invades her crops. She got so fed up one time that she spent hours collecting them all and then cooking them in a spicy stew. Bear in mind, I'm from northeastern Spain, we eat snails, so it's not weird at all. Anyway, it was the best snail stew we ever had, and it was 1000% made with pure, unadulterated hate towards the main ingredient. Anyway, she makes it several times every summer now. It's always fantastic. Story time. My buddies and I were on a long weekend in Barcelona, and decided to hit up some tapas bars, as one does. It was raining. So we ducked into the closest one we could find, and found ourselves the only patrons in a tiny bar with an older gentleman behind it. We didn't speak much Spanish and the barkeep didn't speak any English, so when we asked about something on the menu he put his pointer fingers up on the sides of his head, which we thought was a sign for bull. So we figured what the hell and ordered it. A couple minutes later he comes out with a big plate of snail shells which he then flambates right in front of us. We got little skewers to pry them out of the shells along with an assortment of dipping sauces. It was absolutely delicious. I would love to try your mom's stew. Once ate a pudding made of vegetables in my school cafeteria. That thing looked like green goo put together with some cooked eggs and slime. I tried, I swear I tried to eat that thing and end up gagging every time I took a bite. I can't even remember its flavor, but it was bad. So that vegetable pudding was definitely made with hate, or maybe school cafeteria's food in general. My school used to make the food in the kitchen, because it was private, but then they changed to microwaving pre-cooked food and it was disgusting. Our kids school had a good caterer once. Then, the contract came up for renewal. They had just gotten the new teacher responsible for this kind of stuff, and she is, or was, a health nut. So the old caterer went out, and a new organic and healthy one came in. No, I don't have anything against organic and healthy food. But like any kind of food, you can make it good or bad. And they were more of the latter kind. Lunch attendance dropped dramatically. So the teacher invited parents for a talk about the new caterer, etc. with offering samples, so people could see how good they were. Obviously, the fact that the kids didn't like the food was the parents' fault. I haven't been there, but those who went basically said that they now understood why their kids didn't want to go there anymore. The course, brownish grey organic noodles with the odd bland tomato sauce didn't go as well as the teacher expected. 
Word of the mouth quickly went around, and on the second date for the parents who could not make it to the first, only four showed up. One was a journalist for the local newspaper. Nonetheless, she and the caterer dug her heels in, and they fulfilled the contract. With a handful of kids in attendance for lunch. Extreme hot sauces. They are not made for flavor or enjoyment, they are designed to destroy the mouth, stomach, and of whoever eats it. True story, I mix the crazy hot sauces with special paint, and apply it to the bottom of my boat. It is enough of an irritant, that it keeps barnacles and other marine life from growing on the hull. This is an old trick. I've heard of cajuns in the bay using KN powder. I've even heard of them using Trinidad Scorpion, hash 2 hottest pepper, for this purpose on commercial ships. It's legit. The Scorpion is hash 4 or maybe even hash 5 now, Ed Parker but Curry has created at least two more new peppers, that are hotter than the old Scorpion. That man is full of hatred. Have they been verified yet? I know he supposedly broke the record a while ago with his Pepper X, but for some reason it hasn't yet been verified. I'm not sure who the hell keeps track though. I also know that it's more than just the variety, the methods used to grow the pepper make an impact too. So peppers grown under ideal conditions might turn out hotter than batches of otherwise hotter peppers grown under non-ideal conditions. Tacos con chili, as made by a scorned Mexican woman. IDK who hurt Shia Lily, but she hurt us all as vengeance. You know that chili gonna kick, when a bulo is screaming into the pot chi i i i nga su madre. Working in a Mexican restaurant, I asked the cooks to teach me a little Spanish, so I could make their lives easier. That was the first phrase they taught me. Not quite what I had in mind. Never ever trust someone to teach you a single sentence from another language. We will teach some like I like in my ears or your mother came from a chimpanzee. Or how much for sucking my elbows? Right. They did teach me a few other bits that I've now long forgotten, but that first one stuck with me. The brother of a friend of mine majored in something having to do with Italian culture, I don't remember what, so he became fluent in the language. Their parents decided to take a trip to Italy and asked the brother to teach them useful phrases, like where is the restroom? please? Brother did so, except instead of teaching them to ask politely for the restroom, he substituted the phrase there's a body behind the fountain. His parents ran all over Italy, having a great time. But, they couldn't understand why they got strange looks everywhere when they asked about restrooms. In Titus and Ronicus. The play by Shakespeare there is a famous pie. From wiki. When Tamora is gone. Titus has them restrained, cuts their throats and drains their blood into a basin held by Lavinia. Titus morbidly tells Lavinia that he plans to play the cook, grind the bones of Demetrius and Chiron into powder, and bake their heads. When the Emperor calls for Chiron and Demetrius, Titus reveals that they have been baked in the pie Tamora has just been eating. For context. Demetrius and Chiron, Titus' daughter, Lavinia. Then they cut off her hands, and cut out her tongue, so she couldn't tell anyone who did this to her. He served the above mentioned meat pie to their mother, Tamora. Shakespeare had a goth phase. I was lucky enough to see this play at the Sydney Opera House. My wife was all excited that we had tickets to see Shakespeare, but she had no idea what Titus Andronicus was about. When we walked out of the theater, she turned to me, and, with a completely straight face, said, it was okay, but I think I prefer Midsummer's Night. There's this shop in Chinatown in Singapore, that one of my so-called friends took me to. He took me, and another guy there. After one bite of the noodle the guy ordered for us, our eyes drowned into tears, our tongues disintegrated, our sweat glands just let it torrent out all over. It was the most agonizing experience we had ever had in our life. The guy who took us there and the shop owner were just there laughing at us. I swear that bowl of whatever it was, was made with pure malice. Hello, Singaporean here. Would you happen to remember the name of the shop? I'd love to go try the food from there someday lol. Also yes, as another commenter mentioned here, a lot of good food in Singapore is popular because of good chili. If you don't like spicy food, you'll miss out on a lot.
Why do you guys assume I'm not Singaporean? Well I'm not, but thanks for having me for 4 years, it was nice. Anyway, honestly I had no idea where it is. After that experience I wasn't really in a hurry to mark down where it was to reverse it. Plus I don't speak Mandarin, so I probably couldn't order by myself anyway. Pretty sure it's within walking distance of the MRT though. Definitely weren't in a food court as well. Sorry, that and the pain is all I really remember. Edit, BTW, the guy who took me there is Chinese, from China. If you know anyone ask them about it. Even if it's not the same restaurant it'll probably be one of the better ones, if the PRC themselves like it. How is Nashville hot chicken not the top answer here? The story goes something like a wife found out her husband was cheating and wanted to punish him. Dumped all her KN into a fried chicken dish. Unfortunately for her, he loved it. But literally made with hatred. I was also surprised how far I had to scroll to find this one. Went to the original restaurant in Nashville and I can tell you that it is insane. I got medium level and it ruined my insides for like 24 hours. That one was made in literal hatred for sure. I ordered the hottest one time thinking I could handle it after getting 3 fifths spice before. No, I was very wrong. I felt horrible, got a headache, cried and poured snot and exploded from both ends. I once put about a tablespoon of cayenne on a pork chop and found it medium, would I still if I ordered it hot? I generally like hot. The more chillers and spice the better. Hot chicken managed to annihilate me. I ordered it hotter the next time. It was fabulous. I breathed fire and drank a huge glass of milk. This alleged Midwestern popcorn salad Eater, I'm also from the Midwest and I never heard of this abomination before this video. I'm from the Midwest. I've never seen that before, but I could tell you exactly how to make it, based on just the picture. In case you have any interest in the weird potluck vocab we have in the Midwest regarding salads, I'll attempt to decode how we have mayo bases salads and marshmallow salads lol. Most salads we often call them casseroles when savory, but they have salad in the name. If it's uncooked for instance we categorize tuna noodle salad as a casserole, but the specific dish is a salad. A casserole that is savory, and also cooked, is called a hot dish. Basically any unbaked savory casserole can be defined as a salad. For instance tuna salad, potato salad, egg salad, broccoli bacon salad. Hot dishes are like tater tot hot dish and hamburger noodle hot dish. The sweet things that we call salads are usually just jello and marshmallows. We usually just refer to that as jello, but the recipe itself is usually titled as some sort of salad. When a marshmallow jello has a particularly high ratio of fruit in it, then we well call it just some sort of fruit salad. Hope my little rant here is something my fellow Midwesterners can agree with. My inferred recipe for that popcorn salad, Miracle Whip, frozen peas, little celery bits, and white onions. Stir together, then let sit in fridge for a couple hours to settle. There might be tuna in there too, and probably butter. IDK it's probs a prank, but on god that's how Minnesota church would make it. Anything from the 50s involving savory jello and chunks of meat slash vegetables. I mean, really. How were aspects a thing? Still are a thing in some Slavic countries. Love me some meat loaded with horseradish sauce and spicy Russian mustard. Eastern European or other traditional aspects and 1950s America aspects are not really the same thing. Carladets and similar are made from a rich, spiced broth with a high gelatin content that is allowed to set up. It's basically cold soup with mince meat. Might not be some owns thing, but there's logic and reason to it, and is perfectly fine 1950s America aspic is literally just okay, make a roast dinner let it go cold. Put everything in unflavored packet jello, yes the roast does go in whole. Actually no just the roast for now, let that set, then layer the boiled peas and carrots on top. Throw in some hard boiled eggs as well. When it all sets up. Carve slices of your jello loaf, and serve that these are abominations against all that is good in the world. The birds are caught with nets set during their autumn migratory flight to Africa. 
they are then kept in covered cages or boxes. The birds react to the dark by gorging themselves on grain, usually millet seed, until they double their bulk. The birds are then thrown into a container of armagnac, which both drowns and marinates the birds. The bird is roasted for 8 minutes and then plucked. The consumer then places the bird feet first into their mouth, while holding on to the bird's head. The ortolan is then eaten whole, with or without the head, and the consumer spits out the larger bones. The traditional way French Germans eat ortolans is to cover their heads, and face with a large napkin or towel, while consuming the bird. The purpose of the towel is debated. Some claim it is to retain the maximum aroma with the flavor as they consume the entire bird at once, others have stated tradition dictates that this is to shield, from God's eyes, the shame of such a decadent and disgraceful act. What about the bird poop? This is actually a health concern with Ortolan and a big part of why governments have tried to ban the practice. The bird itself when it drowns, but because it's marinated in the same fluid it drowned in, it also marinates in its own waste. When I was 8, I used to eat cucumbers daily. And my sister knew this, and she despised me for stealing her parents away from her. Lady we are siblings the hell are you talking about? So she cut out the middle of the entire cucumber, filled it with chili powder, told my mom I'll give him his cucumbers today, and force fed me the cucumber 10 tenths worst experience. Jesus. She tried to throw my older brother out of the balcony when he was 3 years old, wasn't alive at that time. My uncle was visiting and stopped my seas before the eating occurred. Edit, was alive but not really cause my mom was pregnant with me during that time. That's why my uncle visited. Edit 2, after that event, my mother stuck all the windows with super glue, presumably to avoid something like that happening to her next child, me. She planned the eating. She threw her idea a week before out of the same balcony to see if the fall was long enough to harm a human being. The next morning her ID was destroyed. She sounds like the spawn of Satan. Might be. My dad's mostly innocent, but my mom's the absolute opposite. One minute she's calling me a good boy the next she's smacking me with a mop for tripping on my dad's slipper. Aspic was a woman's right to choose before there was one. I firmly believe it was a passive-aggressive torture device to get back at having to be a homaker. OMG, why did you make a woman's right to choose and aspect so closely related in the same sentence? Now I'm picturing 50s housewives aborting unwanted pregnancies and serving the remains in a savory jello salad. Edit, I think I just accidentally wrote a gross-out horror-slash-comedy social satire, though. Brian Yuzner, call me. I'm wondering if the aspect dishes are holdovers from the Great Depression in America, when food was scarce in some areas. Mom or grandma learned recipe during depression, and passed to daughter. The timing would be about right for 1950s. Just a random thought. Scrapple. My grandma would eat that it it smelled awful. Actually most anything she cooked for breakfast. She would make long cook cream of wheat, and fill it with so much dried onion and hot sauce it was light orange, and looked like oatmeal. Served with instant coffee with instant creamer. We called her the iron stomach. Scrapple is so good, if you fry it hard, and eat it with potatoes. That onion cream of wheat does sound like demon's breakfast. I don't know how scrapple is prepared to be served, but liver mush fried and served on a buttermilk biscuit with some great jelly or mustard millimeter millimeters. I could eat that every day for breakfast mustard preferred. Now my dad made liver mush once, like from scratch, and that smelled like I like to get a finished loaf from the store. My family is from Pennsylvania and we used to have scrapple all the time. Slice, dredge in flour, then pan fry. Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. We always loved it, but my dad used to tell me not to look at the ingredients. They use everything on the pig except the oink. Fired dough fritters. The twin sticks of fried dough you pull apart before eating, usually with porridge. Mostly any station cuisine. They were first created to send a tyrant and his concubine to hell. Backstory, there was this tyrant, and his concubine, rumored to be a nine-tailed vixen, who were completely mad and cruel. 
They invented new torture techniques to try on opposing court members and have been known to brutalize civilians for fun. No one could retaliate, so they defaulted to an old superstition. That was, apparently by using magic and all, souls could be caught and stuffed into a bottle. If the soul belonged to an evil person, and was causing havoc, by haunting and tormenting people, the soul would be punished. How? Deep frying. The bottles would be tossed into vats of hot oil. By frying the souls, they experience all the pain of actually being deep fried, this would cause resentment and anger. The resentment would grow so deep, that their souls would fall into hell, the 18th level, and can never be reincarnated, because they would be unable to let go of the pain and anger. The peasants, not knowing magic, made simple stand-ins of dough and heartfelt wishes of eternal damnation, then fried it. If one person tries and fails, that's okay, because thousands of people would do this every morning. Sooner or later, someone has to succeed, and send the couple a speedy one-way ticket to hell. Nowadays, fried dough fritters, are just nice with hot, thick, congee rice sprinkled with chopped onion greens and slivers of shredded boiled pork. Excessively spicy curries, that you only find in British Indian restaurants. Oh, you want it spicier, do you Mr. Robinson? How about too hot, is that hot enough? Maybe, seizure because you're cooking from the inside hot, yes? Maybe off back to India, except when I'm heavily inebriated, and would like to eat parodies of your national cuisine, because I'm an ignorant imbecile with genitalia, that does not meet my own unrealistic expectations hot, HM. Please enjoy your meal. Here is a complimentary poppadom, please be careful not to choke on it. Used to have a great Mongolian barbecue place in my neighborhood. I'd go twice a week, and play how many spoons, of the red pepper sauce, with the flat grill cook, with an expression of delighted anticipation. No matter how many I agreed to his face was always disappointed with a hint of derision. One day I decided it, and ordered four spoons. He lit up like a fireworks display, and I swear he was singing to himself as he cooked, slid the plate to me and smiled broadly, which I returned with defiance and a twinge of dread. Saturn took the first amazing bite, then my world collapsed. Too hot to even hurt, my entire mouth went numb. Sweat poured from my forehead into my eyes. Let's not even talk about the nose gush. The rest of the meal was just texture, pain, and euphoria. I passed him, after finishing my plate, unable to talk, but both thumbs in the air. He gave me the upwards nod with knowing eyes and a wicked grin. There was a kitchen fire not six months after that, and they reopened in another part of the city. I swear that fire was caused by him convincing someone to take five spoons. My mom hates roasting chickens for some reason and I loved eating them as kid, which eventually caused her to sigh and answer stupid chicken when I asked what was for dinner once, maybe 12 y slash o, much to my delight. Roasted chickens are still called stupid chicken in my family, I'm 34 now and do most of the stupid chickens with my husband. Cooked with hate, eaten with love. I don't get it. Just throw some spices, salt, and pepper on it, and throw it into the over for 45 minutes or so. A little water in the pan helps too, sometimes some celery, onions, potatoes, and carrots for a full meal. This is the end of the video, thank you guys for staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed watching this, you might as well watch these two.